Oh, rather than to make a motion, you just say, you know, as moved. Right. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Broward Select Board meeting of Tuesday, August 15th, 2023. Uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, all Select Board members are present with the exception of Chair Noah Cobb. Is he online? Can you see that? Uh, no, he's not. Don't, don't see him. So Noah is absent at the moment. He may join us later. Um, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so let's begin with the approval of the meeting minutes dated August 1st, 2023. Has everyone had an opportunity to review them? Yep, I have. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Passes. Okay, we're going to take things a little bit out of order this evening. Uh, and we're going to move down to uh, new business. And going to have the tax commitment. <laughs> Afterwards. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to step up, okay. please. Thank you. All right. Good evening. My name is Paul McKenney. work for Municipal Resources. I'm one of the um, assessors for the town, uh, contract assessors. So the... Um, the memo that I've presented um, shows the uh, prior year comparison spreadsheet that you can see that the town's total taxable real estate valuation base increased by $13,145,250, which is about a 1.8% increase over last year's. Uh, the increase due primarily to um, continued new, re new residential and commercial construction. Um, Personal property decreased by $1,618,845, 23.35% to $1,618,845, decrease in the Betty exemption or reimbursement increased by $1,053,339, which is a 59% increase from 2022 to 13 tax year. And this is due to, um, because we certified at a lower ratio this year, we had to reduce those values along with the standard depreciation. So it brought all those personal property values down. When we do the reevaluation next year, it'll, that'll all come back up to 100% and we'll recapture most of that value. Um, spreadsheet shows that the county tax appropriations increased by roughly 6.4%. Municipal appropriations and school education appropriations increased by 1.7 and 4.2% respectively. Uh, the TIF amount, um, of $66,960 is a significant increase over last year's 28,440, an increase of $28,441, which is an increase of 73.8% over last year uh, due to the growth of the um, former prime tanning site. Uh, state revenue sharing remained the same at 1.4 million. On the spreadsheets following the municipal tax rate calculation, I have attached a spreadsheet showing the potential range of overlay amounts depending on the tax rate selected. The minimum tax rate that could be selected is $18.28, while the maximum rate is $19.18. Uh, for every penny changed in the tax rate, the overlay changes by $7,925. Uh, in consideration of the noted changes in valuation, appropriations, and revenues, it is our suggestion that a tax rate of $18.32 with, uh, with an overlay of $35,000 be selected. Uh, this is an increase of, from last year's rate of $18.22. So I get, I'm looking for a vote or any, answer any questions to... To, you know, decide which tax rate you'd like. Uh, the three that I've got is $18.30, uh, which is a overlay of $21,534. $18.32, which is what I'm recommending for $37,386. And $18.34 would be $53,239. Um, 
one thing I just want. So for a taxes on a $350,000 assessment, uh, last year was $6,377. This year would be $6,412, which would be a $35 difference on a $350,000 house or 0.55% of an increase. Well, to get the ball rolling, I'll make a motion that we set our tax rate at $18.32. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to recommend the 18.32 tax rate. All those in favor? I'd like to have a little oh, further sorry. discussion sorry. first. I apologize. Um, um, well, you are talking about the per personal property tax the decrease by $1.6 million. Yeah. Um, you said you expect that to be brought back up when we do the um, reassessment? Yeah, a lot of those, because we had to reduce the ratio to 85% from 90% last year, it brought a lot of, a lot of properties below the $10,000 minimum. So therefore, they're not taxable at all. So that's, you know, that's where the biggest part of it comes. But next year, when we do the reevaluation, everything will be back up to 100%. Um, so therefore, those will come back. You know, we'll we'll get those accounts back, and whatever you know, whatever new accounts we have. I'm sure that the project across the street will also generate more, you know, more personal property business as well. So is after after you know we do our reevaluation is, is uh, the revaluation how long do you expect that to take just the one year or yeah it it'll go into effect for the april 1st 2024 values so i'll start it as soon as we get done here we'll yeah we got the paperwork in the mail yesterday <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll probably start in september october okay you know once everything gets finalized and we start we'll start looking we've already started looking at sales and stuff but um you know, we'll get into the full swing of things this fall. Thank you. Yeah. Any other else have a comment? No? Nope. All those in favor? Any opposed? Thank, thank you, you very Paul. much. Yep. Good, thank you. Thank you for taking me here. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a long week so far. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So I would like to go back then to uh, public comment. Anybody for public comment? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So we have no public comment. Uh, we have no public hearing. Reports of committees. Hello. Um, a couple of things. The first is that um, the BCM committee chose the BCM sign that you see on the front of this page right here. Um, basically, it would go on the front side of the building just under the red light. Um, and what we're looking at, it's just small, but it will point out BCM as being around the corner. Um, we had talked about having a section that said Burgess Meeting Room. Um, the cost went up considerably for that, so we decided not to do that piece. If you would like that piece and the town is willing to pay for it, I'd be happy to add it on. But just for the BCM sign, I figured we'd go with the, the smaller one. Um, and then the second thing is um, we're doing a summer fun video contest. Um, one of the things I've seen is on Facebook is people have been saying, you know, what do you do? We just moved to the area. What do you do for fun with your kids? Or where do you go that, that would be fun for a family or something like that? And so I thought, what better way than doing a, a video contest? And so we're doing a 30 to 60 second um, summer fun activity. And it can be anywhere in New England. So it doesn't have to be in Berwick. It can, you know, when you limit it to Berwick, you, you're going to get the same videos over and over again. So I thought doing New England, at least it's within driving distance, so people could go if they wanted to. Um, and we're going to culminate on Community Media Day, October 20th. So videos would be due by October 10th, and um, we'd go through, pick out the winners, and we're going to do three categories. Um, so there'll be a younger age, and we're looking at like 8 to 14, 
and then 15 to 20 and 21 and over. Um, and there were big prizes for each category. So, you know, I've already gotten donations from Enzo Benzo Donuts, fun time. Um, and Bad Wolf Butcher has offered some, J. Evelie Salon has looked at it, and I'm asking other places to donate as well. Um, once I have all of that, I'll get some posters made up. We'll put them in all of the locations we can think of, and uh, we're also going to make up a public service announcement to advertise it and get it out there. Um, and then what we'd like to do is culminate, if we can, organize on somewhere around the October 20th a film night where we show all of the videos, not just the winners, but everybody's video, which would be kind of fun. So wanted to make you aware of that. Any questions? Are you going to also, since it's, the deadline is October 10, are you also going to send this out with the students at the schools? That's what I'm hoping, yes. that, that I Actually, um, I talked with uh, one of the committees this last week about how we could get information through to the schools, because they don't always have poster places to put inside. Um, so I'm looking at how we might be able to do that. Okay. Anything else? Anybody have any questions? Well, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Good evening, Noah. Yes. Uh, make Noah a uh, note that uh, Chair Noah Cobb has joined us via uh, Zoom. <laughs> yeah, we know you're just sitting over on Worcester Road. <laughs> 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 well, we're glad you could join us. Okay, moving to department reports. Do we have any department reports? No, okay. Appointments, presentations, other guests. I see no other guests in the audience. Okay. Unfinished business. The amendments to the land use ordinance, subdivision regulations, village overlay district, and design guidelines. This is on the agenda just to go over the changes since last meeting. Uh, we had a few minor changes based off of board and attorney feedback. These have been reviewed by our land use attorney, and they have the green light to go forward on the ballot. And I'll just go over some of the minor changes. Um, on the land use ordinance amendments on the automotive convenience store and gas station, um, making a distinction and adding or to distinguish from EV charging stations. Um, that's it for gas station changes. Uh, the other, there's two more changes. Uh, another one on uh, section six under lighting. Uh, after speaking with Phil, our attorney, it just made sense to remove, we had an ex ex exemption in there from the regulations for temporary lighting. I know what the intent was. Um, it just could set us up for issues down the line. If you know, there's something that glares onto the street and it's temporary, they can say it's temporary. It just eliminates that potential for a conflict down the road. I, it's not defining what temporary is. Yeah, kind it of. just. <laughs> I mean, even if it's a, you know, if it's no. if it's otherwise it would be an illegal light, but it's temporary. Why would we yep. allow it? Uh, the last change is it's threading the design guidelines and standards ordinance into the land use ordinance. So by creating a performance standards, so every conditional use and site plan through planning board has to meet A through S, has to meet, it has to be a yes on each one, otherwise it doesn't get accepted. This adds a T, which says that uh, design guidelines and standards Applications for new buildings and structures within the village overlay district and along major corridors of 4, 236, and 9 must conform to the design guide and standards ordinance. We are taking a vote tonight just to place this on the November ballot, correct? Correct. Yep. I hear a motion. <clears throat> so that would be under the new business that would be taking those votes? That would be 
uh, the, or yeah, we need, need, to, need, to, need to vote on the changes to the amendments first. Right. And, and then, then you'll make your recommendations. Make the recommendations okay. later. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept the amendments as proposed by uh, the town manager per legal guidelines. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded to accept the amendments recommended by our legal attorneys. Any discussion? Yeah, James, just for clarity for people looking on. Um, so number seven, so we talk about adding the T, we're talking about the, um, that would actually follow the design guides and standards that we're also going to be an under two, right? Right. Perfect. It would make it so the, the, applic the applicant would have to show evidence that they have conformed to the design guide and standards. Perfect. Any other discussion about the amendments? Under G, James, um, it, it's saying, you know, the main Department of Environmental, G and M both seem like they're state and, or federal regulations. Do those need to be on there? From an efficiency um, GM. It seems like there would be a lot more if we included all of them. There's probably a lot more. It is It is leaning more on the side of redundancy. It doesn't, I don't think it hurts to have it in there because you could, you know, for anything like that, you could throw. We have some examples of that where it has to meet state standards, yeah. but obviously they have to meet the state standards anyways. Right. I, I, I don't see a problem with leaving it in there. You know, they, they have to anyways, and this is just, you know, putting it out there in our regulations, telling the developers that, you know, they will have to meet them. That's all it's saying. Yeah, and, you know, probably a lot of others, too, that aren't there. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to for just for the amendments to be added any further discussion no all those in favor <laughs> all, all those opposed noah is an aye and that is five to zero you <coughs> all right town manager report we have a contractor to move the irrigation where the playground is going to be at Memorial Field. The site work will begin soon. We're just working on invoices and, and, and uh, insurance. And once it begins, it'll be two or three days. So once that's done, we'll be able to schedule installation of the playground. Nice. That'll make the residents happy. Yeah. A long, mm -hmm. long time coming. So we recently found out our video security system is a security risk. We're going to need to replace our video system. We initially reached out. We had a, a safety meeting about a month and a half, a month or two ago, with police to go over some best practices. Uh, Patty and I met with two-way to go over locations. So you'll see a pr proposal. Um, so. While we are needing to replace the system, we'll have an opportunity to improve and have more coverage in important areas in and in, in around Town Hall. Jody and I met with Knowles Industrial out of Gorham. We reviewed some areas uh, that need addressing for water infiltration. Greg from Knowles pointed out how the windows need to be caulked. Seemed like pretty low hanging fruit and just explain how water can get in just because it's not cocked properly. Also that some bricks need to be repointed. He also pointed out that our, uh, in, our front steps need to be entirely replaced. They are in good enough condition that we can maintain them over the next five or so years, but for our capital plans, we should be saving some funds to plan on completely replacing it. And it might be an opportunity to put in a ADA ramp or something while we're at it. Yeah, James and I were talking with uh, Jody 
a week or so ago, and uh, Jody said that when they were doing some inspections on the, the front steps, is everything we see is just a shell over just dirt underneath. There's no real foundation, and everything's starting to fall back in. So, you know, and to do it properly, we'll need to take everything out and redo it all. So, and if we're going to redo it, as it looks now, or something close, it's going to be expensive. It's a lot of brickwork, yeah. so it's uh, something we need to look forward to. Right, if they, they are in okay enough shape, to, we could do a short-term uh, fix to get us through for five years, and then save over the five years, and just that might be a good five-year plan. Last thing I have is lawn chairs. Bring your lawn chairs to Sullivan Square this Saturday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Portions of Sullivan Street and Rochester Street will be closed. There will be bands, food, a variety of local performers, performers from the region, and activities for all ages. I'll see you there. <laughs> that completes my report. Okay, thank you. All right, select board communications. I have one. Uh, we have received an invitation from Nassau and Health to tour their... Uh, facility up there in the um, Sanford Springville area um, and I took the opportunity to go it was um, it, it was pretty interesting to see how they have collectively put most of the services that are needed in one location to sort of cut down on oh you have to go here for this and here for that they've got mental health primary care uh, dental everything all in one building and it, you don't have to have um, uh, insurance they have they have some that use the primary care with insurance because they know they can get everything done there. And then they have sliding scale for those that don't have insurance. But it was just amazing to see how many services they provide in one location. And they also have an incredible network of people. So if you need a specialist, they have connections that even with the sliding space uh, pay scale, they can make those appointments happen. So um, I... Um, Enjoyed the visit and appreciated them, um, you know, inviting us in from the open house. That's all I have. Does anybody else have anything? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Okay, so we already did the... Uh, that. So we're going to go to approval of accounts payable and payroll wants. Mm -hmm. So the first one uh, is dated 8-17-2023, payroll warrant number 10 for $91,171.75. The second one is dated 8-3-2023, payroll warrant number 8 in the amount of $92,748.20. Next one is dated... August 10th, 2023, payroll warrant number nine, amount of $96,003.25. And an August 15th, 2023, accounts payable warrant number 11, in the amount of $1,039,834.11. Hear a motion. I'll make a motion we pay our bills. A second. Motion has been made and seconded to pay our bills. Any discussions? All those approve? Five. I mean, thank you very much. All right. Do we have, uh, next up is the transfer fees. Please station fees. This is just to recover some costs. Um, we have uh, it's a pretty large expense. A full load approaches ten thousand dollars to remove the yard brush. Um, initially proposed five dollars a bag or five dollars a yard. Um, Mike emailed me I think with some good points that um, I guess for the typical residential user that probably should be included in the transfer station budget. So to have some way of factoring that in the fee, whether it's the first three bags 
or free your first three yard three yards are free and after that there's some some sort of fee um, I use the Sanford uh, the Sanford transfer station they have a conversion rate I thought was pretty interesting um, just for your information a, a small pickup load is about a yard and a half um, so if we wanted to do well it's a first two or three yards or contractor bags free and then anything after that five dollars per bag or yard is there any Sounds like it's getting complicated. <laughs> yeah. I said, did you get any feedback just from down? Yeah, I mean, about, why are we doing it to begin with? It costs money to haul it off. It costs, yeah. Do we have anyone else that brings trash in, like other towns or people, businesses like? It's mostly like, just. It'd be mostly just like we're, some of the issues historically with the transfer station is we're, we're, we're subsidizing businesses and contractors mm -hmm. by them coming in and dumping off larger than the average user and they should pay for anything that's above and beyond well what that's what i'm wondering are they getting charged extra right now there's no there's there's n nothing in our fee schedule for yard waste yeah. so how would you track if somebody are you saying each visit they would get like one free or two free or would you have some way of tracking that because that to me, that's what makes it sound complicated. Right. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll bring up what I brought to James, just so. And the only thing I could think of was there are some residents when we're, we're talking about bags, because I think the point of it here is when you have those full trucks or contractors, or yeah. that's what we're trying to offset, because that's where there's Absolutely. brush or shrubs or everything else. I'm thinking of some of the people that use that are the residents that are, I have some senior residents in my neighborhood that might fill three quarters of a bag and take it a week. Now you're gonna charge them five bucks this week. It's three quarters of back next week. And I was like, yeah. maybe they will, maybe they won't. But it's that's something that they're already paying for. You know, really, that's kind of right. That's yeah. what so I'm that's where I was just like, track it. I mean, I was just thinking it was a large load. I mean, I was thinking, and I just told James if we want to talk to see with the transfer stations, if it's something that's a large load coming in, like I mean, if I'm unloading a whole bunch of brush, yeah, I understand. I'm paying because I'm right. bringing stuff down. Right. But Sally down the street bringing a bag. Right. You got a landscaping <laughs> truck and you're dumping it off a bunch of you should yeah, be I'm Yeah. Well but are they already charged? The landscaping company that drops off there like we don't bring our trash, somebody comes and picks it up. Are they bringing it there and are they getting an increase? No. No, not right mm. now. No. In, in, Shouldn't they be the ones that get increased? The people that bring it in that are charging us already? This would be just be specifically just for yard waste. Oh, not for regular trash. Nothing yeah. else. No, no, no. Oh. This, no, is, this just, is just for like the brush and the leaves. And, and, yeah. oh, and, okay. and you know, get getting on uh, Mike's topic there is is you know, and one of the reasons we had to change things for the demolition waste is it's that people were. Saying, oh, I don't have a pickup truck. I have four bags. Yeah. Um, no, that's why we went to buy bag there. Um, is for the yard waste, you know, you're talking about mostly leaves and grass clippings. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, maybe four bags free, and after that, you have to pay per load? I don't know. You know, that's it. It's hard to. Yeah, you know, I don't you, have a number you, to quantify. I just right, asked James. Yeah. I go well, see like what I they said, want. You, I go. If you come in, you come in with a truckload of brush, it's pretty obvious. You've got a exactly. truckload of brush. Right. Is, well, you know, but. You know, if we do, if we say, oh, if you come in with bags, we don't need to charge, is we'll get those people with the 10 bag bags. and everything. Yes. yes <laughs> yeah. They'll, they will get right. uh, 10 bags. And so. I can uh, go back to that. Yeah, I think, I think there's something we need to think about a little bit. Yeah, yeah my, my, cause at first I was like, oh yeah, it sounds great. I know what it's, we're doing. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking about it. I'm like, well, if you get yeah. somebody who's, this is all they can do, a little part of their yard, and never charge them five bucks every weekend when they're going down there, right. you're charging a resident. Sixty dollars right. over I, the I fall. Agree, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think we had to do something. But I do think we should do something. To, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah Unless yeah. we had like a free week of spring cleanup and a free fall cleanup, like a whole week. Anybody we, could bring we, it. We used to do that. <laughs> well, we still got the contractors. <laughs> it, well, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Is that is it was so successful oh, no. that <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have enough room. Yeah. At the transfer station <coughs> for all the dumpsters we needed. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, because everybody would wait all year long, oh. and then yeah, we needed fifteen or twenty dumpsters all of a sudden. Oh, have so, you been Have you been down there to see what it 
looks like because you and said we you have people well, right but for okay. the actual leaves and things we do go down okay. yeah. and it's just they i think they just push it back i don't know what they, they do, do but when it fills up it gets hauled off yeah because it gets too big to so then yeah. we pay every yeah. time it gets yeah. hauled fire off. hazard if you leave it there yeah, yeah. And you said what, ten thousand dollars a year right now? Uh, yeah, it's getting up there. Uh, yeah, it's about ten thousand. Like a, full, I think a full haul. Oh, a full seen. haul. Yeah. Oh, so it's more than ten thousand. So yeah, it is something that we need to look at. Obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Um, How big of a truck is a full haul? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> if I have enough stuff, well, if it, 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 it probably probably uh, uh, is a do set that comes do and takes set, it. Yeah. So a, a log and truck. Basically, is would be with all the brush and everything. I would assume okay. yeah, what it would right. would be. Yeah. So uh, okay, oh, yeah. So yeah, that's something we. we Right. I mean, two two bags is not half a truckload, but four right. bags is. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, if they can come back with like something like that, so that the you know the resident yeah. that only has a bag or a bag and a half is. And, and, get... and you got, we got to make it got to make it convenient for the guys at the transfer station too. Right. Yeah, I don't uh, want overcomplicated where they well, have to be like out there. Exactly. They you know with with cash flowing back and forth all the time is. is yeah. um, and on a Saturday and Sunday, it gets pretty confusing. We know that. Mm -hmm. It gets busy. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to note, too, is on this proposed one, you're only giving, um, like, two weeks' notice. Is there any reason why we can't give people 30 days' notice if we're going to make a, a change? Oh, absolutely not. No, it could be, it could be October. Or yeah, I just think that yeah. because people yeah, go to the dump every, every week. And sometimes not every other week. So if you say a month, that someone's going to know them. So everybody would be notified. Have something there, have it marked, have BCM cover it, and you know, not that people won't still complain, but you can at least <laughs> yeah. say we gave them 30 days notice of the change. We didn't. Oh, you just slid it in. See, so this here isn't for regular traffic. So we're going to. We're not going to vote on this. We're going to send it back to them. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the next is the November 7th, 2023 town referendum. Select board recommendations of the warrant articles. Okay. So we need to vote on each individual article. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the ones with the yes and no vote. Yes. Not article one. No, yeah. article, right. Starting with article two. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. So I will read it. Article two. Shall the town vote to adopt the amendments to land use ordinance? Exhibits A are attached here in two. There's no motions or anything, you just have to Just motion, vote. okay. So how many yes votes? Noah, okay. Article three, shall the town... Um, can oh. you ask for no votes? No votes. No. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Thank you. Okay, Article 3. Shall the town vote to adopt the amendments to land use ordinance regarding marijuana? Are there any yay votes? Okay, any no votes? Okay. Article 4. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed design guide and standards ordinance? Are there any yay votes? Okay, are there any no votes? Okay. Article 5, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the village overlay district? Are there any yay votes? Any no votes? Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the subdivision ordinance? Are there any yay votes? Are any no votes? I can just sidebar here for this one. I have yeah, a little. I will abstain from Article Seven as well. Yep. I have a little information on this one. Um, I've been talking with our attorney. Um, so this, our 
This provision has a lot of gray areas in it. It's something that Tom brought up a little bit last meeting. Um, I just want to go over it quickly because the, the board does have a couple options. Um, one of them is not even including it on the warrant at all. If you got, I think that's the first vote you guys should take is whether the article should even be on the ballot and then do the recommendation. Now just go over some information quickly. So at SMPDC, they're split on what they believe what active means. And that's what this hinges on if it's even able to be petitioned to be accepted by the town. Lee J thinks active means that there's an open lot in the subdivision. Hannah believes that that alone is not considering it active, is that it's literally they're, they're act, they were actively constructing in, in 2019 when we adopted the um, to no longer take over dead ends. And speaking with Phil, he said that there is some weight in the fact that the road was not completed up until a few weeks ago. We held a construction escrow, and in that sense that it could still be considered active. In the June 2024 um, ordinance amendments, it's recommended that we eliminate the exemption at all. We just go straight to, we are no longer taking over dead, dead end roads, period. So um, with that said, it's, it's great enough that it would be perfectly acceptable to go in either, in either direction, to either include it on the ballot or not. But then if it is, obviously if it was included then taking the recommendation. That sound mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> that gets complicated, I know. Yeah. Is, uh... so I have a question. There's 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 a there's a few, there's a few that are that are out there. Um, it's not it's not a huge number of roads, um, and it, yeah, in the next available election, we'll fix that and make it much more clear. I, I'm the one, one that really pushed to stop the town taking over dead end roads. Um, we can't, we can't take care of the roads we already have. Um, I think it's foolish for us to just keep accepting new roads in, assuming that you no, know, sometime in the future we're going to have that money to fix it. Um, is I made the argument back then, and I'll make it again, that if it's a through road connecting between two existing roads, to me that's one thing, because then it can be used as an emergency way. If the road is, one end is closed or something, then you can do it. But with the dead ends, the cul-de-sacs, and things like that, is the only purpose for that road is to serve the people on that road. It's not to serve the town at all. And, you know, I have, like I said, I pushed for that and we had it. And is this road was brought in and started back into the old rules. And I realize that. But, is, you know, whether we accept to put it on the ballot or not, as I'll say right now, I'm going to vote no that we recommend the residents vote for it. So. But what you just said is, when this came up, it did follow the existing rules at the time. It, it started, but is by not completing it until this year, how many years has it been in existence? 
that's been a long though. Very close to ten. Twenty? <laughs> no, it's more than ten. It's <laughs> probably closer to twenty years, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, is um, and <laughs> is the one active lot. They they have purposely left one lot there, not built on, and. All these years, it could have been built on, and they didn't. And when we were looking at property for the fire station, we were looking at a piece further up Pine Hill Road, and it abuts that property all the way down there. And we were told at the time that that lot could be used as the continuation road you know, through there. So my feeling is they never planned on putting a house in there. They planned on... You know, using that as a right of way. But I can't prove that. that like I said, that's just my feeling. Okay. So, so I'm just, we harp a lot on following the rules as they're written. And so that's why I'm asking when the road was originally constructed, it fell under the, the regulations that existed at the time. We've since changed those, but is this grandfathered in? And I, and I use that word very loosely because. Like you said, it took 10 years, but did it meet all of the requirements of the town at the time that they built it? It's okay. built to it's built a town standard. It's okay. built to the town standards now. <laughs> but no, it's like no. Like I said, I'll, I'll you know put it on the put it on put it on the ballot as uh, you know, if that's the board's will. I think we've closed the loophole and, and yeah. No? Okay. Can you vote to put it on the ballot? That's what I'm going to do now okay. before I do that. Does anybody okay. want to comment before I read the article? No. Okay. Article 7. Shall the town vote to accept Chandler's Way as a public right of way as requested by residents? Do I have any yay votes? So is is this just to put it on the ballot? So is um No. Oh, okay. Uh, do we have any no votes? Nay votes. So you Dang. don't want to put it on the ballot. Correct. That's what we're voting for, correct? Okay. Right. So it's there's a motion to not put it on the ballot. Can someone no, make that? No, I'm motion? sorry. I apologize. No, I'm reading this article as this is going on the ballot, and what is our okay. recommendation? Okay, so it was zero yes, four no's, and one abstention. Correct. Okay. Yes, yes yeah. that's, uh, sorry if I said that wrong. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Good enough. All right. So, next up, do we have any quick claim deeds or... Installment contracts. No. no. Okay. Uh, abatement supplements. Second public comment. Anyone from the public? <laughs> okay. Um, do we have an executive session? No. No. Okay. Uh, other business non-agenda item. We do have one. Um, what did I do with it? Nope. Hold on one second. Bear with me. Is it in the folder? It's the MLA. It is in your folder under uh, number nineteen. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I thought it was separate. It is, but... Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the Maine Municipal Association has their annual uh, voting to put people on um, election of president and executive committee members. The first one is for vice president, which is a one-year term. Uh, there is one person nominated, Melissa Doan, town manager of the town of Bradley. Do I have any, uh, do we need a motion? 
No, you can just ask it. Yeah, yeah. Who votes for her? Who votes to approve, uh, Ms. Doan? Okay, thank you. Any no votes? Thank you. Uh, next up is the executive committee members for three year terms. There are three openings and there are three <laughs> nominated committee members. Yay. Shiloh Lafreni, town manager of the town of Jay. Nathaniel Rudy, the town manager, the town of Gray. Dina Walker, select person, town of Weld. And I apologize if I mispronounce anyone's name. They're not listening. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, do we have any yay? Do we have to vote them individually or no? no? Um, great. So do we have any yay votes to approve all three of those candidates? Any no votes? Flying colors. <laughs> Yes. Yep. I have something quickly for a, just the other business. Okay. We had a, a note sent in from Allison Hurley at, at Bad Wolf requesting um, changing of the parking timings in, in front of the businesses. Um, that's something that we probably want to just have a more broader, it's probably something we need more discussion about. But I did want to um, just address one one suggestion she had in our uh, municipal lot, something that I was looking at. When you pull into our lot, we have some signage that makes it seem like it's all for town hall employees. Um, so something I've talked with Jody about that's pretty low hanging fruit is just addressing some of the signage, adding in Monday through Thursday, eight to six. That way when town halls closed, folks are, you know, they feel like they can use our parking lot. Uh, they still can't park overnight, things like that. There's still other, you know, snow emergencies and things of that nature. But just so, you know, once Corn Point fills up, they can actually feel like they can use our municipal lot and not park in front of businesses that need more of those short-term uses. So just want to share that as it was. So uh, Allison wants, like, the time reduced. Is it, it's like two-hour parking, right? Yeah, she suggested something shorter. I mean, anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes in front of her building. I mean, I think we wouldn't have any problem with it being like 30 minute parking on the street, but that's a discussion for another day that we can have. That we can bring out. And, and who would enforce it? That would be police. Do we have any input from the police department on that? The, we uh, should. It'd be more feedback. money, too. <laughs> Because they don't really do a whole lot of parking enforcement currently right now, do they? They're, one of their feedbacks is, uh, you know, they had to ask for uh, another staff. And they said that, you know, they'd be happy to help. I mean, they obviously would be happy for it, but I think they would be able to enforce more and do more with an extra full-time. And what about parking ever. on the side of the building here? It'd be less than a full-time person, <laughs> you know, on the side of the building. Remember I'd spoken to you about that? Oh, yeah, uh, that one, I've, we, we've talked about that. It just, pub <laughs> public safety, both, both chiefs are unified, and their, their concern is, um, so if you have uh, passenger side opening up on Rochester Street, because it's more down, it's downhill, people are going pretty fast. Their, con their, their concern is a child kind of just, you know, opening the door and not really getting out of getting struck by yeah, it. But they can do it here too, on both sides. It's they park right in front of the town hall on the side. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's it, it's also possible to uh, maybe just have the parking on the other side of Rochester Street. Yeah. Yeah, but it sounds a lot better than getting another employee to do parking. Her put a few <laughs> The basis of her concerns are more so for people running in and out, right, and not having a parking yeah, spot. Right. So have we business. discussed with Jody or even Chief about even just trying to make three or four spots right in front of the businesses while construction is going on, like just parking for like pick up right there or a 20-minute 20, 20 parking, like just allocate right. three or four spots there? Is that something that could be I, potential I, to do? I think the like if we wanted to discuss doing – like two directly in front of that business that would accommodate both the future pizza shop and Bad Wolf. That I think that would be 
that wouldn't adversely affect the other businesses. But that's not. That's only because you're only you're only talking about in front of that building. So you also have Mint, who's there, and so you're saying two spaces. Has Subway or Gavin work, Duke ever so. uh, asked about anything? It is, we've had that discussion with them in the past about the the little parking lot by the memorial by the statue okay, yeah. and right in front of them is uh, we've altered those parking times several times in the past few years um, it <clears throat> used to be only two hour parking in the little parking lot and um, I think we eliminated that and it, you know I don't I don't think there are any more two hour parking signs in the little lot and that it hasn't seemed to be a problem with it so. like mint, so with mint Mint's more of like an hour stay, right. and the gym probably more like an hour stay as well, yeah. so they both utilize. But the other thing, too, is to your point, you put these signs up there that say 30-minute parking, and then someone's there for an hour because they're running to a different the gym or a point or something like that. <clears throat> now they're going to be calling the police. Uh, I got a parking complaint. Um, you, you know, that's why I think that you should have their input, too. Are they going to be able to... Monitor that during the day. How many apartments are going in in the middle? In the in there. 265 over the next 265 over the next four years. Okay, and they're all going to have ample parking with guest parking, and there'll be 300 parking spaces in the middle. They're providing 300 parking spaces, and across the street there'll be a hundred. So you'll see. Saturday nights, maybe Thursday nights, Friday nights, you might see it, it'll get busy. It'll be it'll be busy. Yeah, it'll that's be. what I'm saying. I mean, parking's gonna be a problem going forward. You need so, to have some sort of co any, you know, parking plan. Any place worth going to has parking problems. Yeah, that's right. You know, I agree any, with you. 100%. But what we do need meter? to be proactive. We do Would need to be. It's gotta be. It's gotta yeah. be. Put the money in. Oh. I mean, you gotta remember all visitors to town hall park there too. We can't limit them to 30 minutes. No, and that's why, and I, that's why, I, was just, that's why I was asking if allocating right. a couple Somebody spots would be somewhere in the middle. You pay your taxes, right. pay your taxes middle, and you know? pay to do it, too. <laughs> um, well, the, yeah, that front yeah. parking should be for... It just so sounds like something we need to keep working on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, just, I just wanted to really just report the... I think the, like I said, the low-hanging fruit is our municipal lot. Um, very coincidentally, I was taking a look at the parking signs. The day I took a look at them, someone pulled up to me and asked if they could park there. Yeah, I mean, if, if we think changing the verbiage on the signs is going to help with, with the flow there, then by all means, I think that's an inexpensive one, way one to, small to try to right. race. You know. But any other, any other changes, like you guys talk, talked about, it's it can get complicated. If you... If you time something over here, it can affect over here, so it needs to be looked at comprehensively. I think they need to have a bigger look at it, you know, and you got to have input from the police department if you're going to ask them mm -hmm. to monitor it and write tickets. And, and they're going to say they want to employ. Well, it's a Tuesday night, so it's trivia night at Corner Point. So they're going to be there a while. And I want to run in and buy sausage at their place. I'm looking for a place to park. Um, so then the, I think it's not going to be the people. I think it's going to be you find the only space you can. When I'm coming here to get to the meeting at 630, I, there's nothing mm -hmm. on a Tuesday night because I know they have an event going on. So I'm always in yeah, the other yeah, the too. Yeah. Um, so I, th I know I agree with you. I think that most people are going to try to be respectful, but I also think then the businesses, if they see the signs, they're going to expect that, oh, I know that car's been sitting there for 45 minutes. I'm going to call the police. 
I just think I think that we need to look at it and we need to bring everybody to the table and say what's going to work and what isn't and get everybody's feedback before mm -hmm. we go putting up 30 minute signs. I understand her concern because yeah, if you have a business, you want people to come in and out. Um, but yeah. solving a problem here can definitely cause problems in other yeah. cases. Exactly. There's there's a connection. There's a, a ricochet effect. I think putting some more thought into it and then actually bringing in the businesses to have a conversation with everybody. That's yeah. Sounds like a workshop, Dave. I was just going to say, it sounds like maybe we should put a workshop together. Yeah, I'm sure that Noah will be happy to get that organized on his return. <laughs> <laughs>